Hello everyone, and we're glad that you're able to join us this afternoon at From Struggle to Street Outreach Ministries. I know there's a lot going on, so we really appreciate you tuning in. If you have your Bibles, please turn with me to the book of Psalms in that 49th chapter, and we're going to be looking at that first verse through the, well, the first through the 13th verse, okay? And it reads, Hear this, all ye people. Give ear, all ye inhabitants of the world, both low and high, rich and poor, together. My mouth shall speak of wisdom, and the meditation of my heart shall be understanding. I will incline my ear to the parable, or a parable. I will open my dark sayings upon the heart. Wherefore should I fear in the days of evil, which the, when the iniquity of my heel shall compass me about? They that trust in their wealth and boast themselves in the multitude of their riches, none of them can my enemies redeem thy brother nor give to God a ransom for him. For the redemption of thy soul is precious or costly, and it ceaseth forever, that he should still live forever and not see corruption. For he seeth that wise men die, likewise the fool and the brutish person perish and leave their wealth to others. Their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever, and their dwelling places to all generations they call their lands after their own names. Nevertheless, man being in honor abideth not. He is like the beasts that perish. This their way is their folly. Yet their posterity approve their sayings. Say no. And may the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. Let us pray. Holy Father, we come in the name of Jesus, and again, we just want to say thank you for the reading and the hearing of your word. We ask, O oh God, that you would just lead and guide me in the way that I'm to go, that you would touch every heart and every mind, even now, preparing their ears to hear and their hearts to comprehend. We ask in the name of Jesus that you would stir them up, O oh God, and that you would just move in the midst, strengthening and encouraging, O oh God, lifting up, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, we're living in troublous, troublous times but we know that you are yet in control. We ask in the name of Jesus that your divine will be done. And we thank you for it. Amen. Amen. Looking at this word on today, I just wanted to kind of talk with you a little bit because uh, this is a psalm uh, from the sons of Korah. And they were actually um, talking about a lot of things in general, but I just want us to talk about the desire or the lust for anything other than God. And this day and time, in the times that we're living in right now, I think it's a big deal because of the fact that we have people of God, the call of the chosen, as I always like to say, who are struggling. They are struggling with their faith. They are struggling with their call. They are struggling with their gifts. They are struggling even with, as I said before, their faith. They look to man, they look to situations, they look to circumstances, they look to the government, they look to everything but God. But in looking at what we just read, I just want to highlight a little bit in talking about how Korah, the father, so to speak, if you can, you can go back to Numbers, the 16th chapter, if you would like, and you could read that story about that, how he truly challenged Moses and how he actually wanted the position that Aaron had <laughs> instead of accepting what God had already blessed him with, gifts and uh, being creative and doing a whole lot of things. You could read that on your own. But I just wanted us to talk about this because it's this day and time that we truly need God. We need him to intervene. We need him to stir us up. We need him to revive us again, as they say. We need God to do a work now because of the fact that many of us have gone after other things. And if the truth be told, from the beginning, God said his word that he is the same God. Yesterday, today, and forever, he does not change. So he's a God of character and integrity. And so when you look at that, we have lusted after or desired other things other than him. So the problem is that we have turned from God. We have turned from his word, his truth. We have turned from his ways and went about, as the scripture says, to establish our own righteousness. We go about to do things that we want to do, have lifestyles that we want to have and say, OK, God, I want you to get with this. Well, he's not that kind of God. Amen. He's not going to get with that. Because he has already established in his word, his principles and his uh, statutes and his ways in order for us to live. And so when you look at it, the, the root cause of our downfall to me or the root cause of our 
stumbling or going through so many things is because of disobedience and the fact that we have turned from God. So if you look at the word and you think about it, tests come to, I always like to say, encourage us or challenge us or to give us a reality check. The tribulations and the trials and the tests, all those things come to, to check you to see where you are. And a lot of us are not, how you say, as strong as what we think. We're not as mature as what we think. We're not as uh, close in our relationship with God as we think. Because as soon as a test or a trial come, something comes to affect you or to um, uh, uh, attack you, so to speak, attack your family or attack one of your children or attack your job or attack anything, even like the coronavirus situation is going on. Our faith is failing. And a lot of us, because of the fact that we have not, um, how you say, we're not stable. <laughs> Amen. We're not stable in, in standing our ground on what God has said in his word. We stumble and we struggle and we, and we have to understand that it's because we have turned or, or, or lust or the desire after anything which is not God, which is not his way. And so this is a root of our downfall. And when you're looking at the word, I'm like, verse six says, they that trust in their wealth and both themselves in the multitude of their riches. And it could be anything, not necessarily money. The word of God says, where your treasure is, there will your heart be. And so whatever your mind, whatever is consuming your mind, whatever is taking up the majority of your thinking or your, your desire, it's where you want to be. It's what you want most. And whatever that thing is, that's your wealth. And so when you think about it, even to the point of desire, what someone else has, as we talked about Cora, he really wanted Aaron's position. And so when you think about uh, these things and we look at our own lives, we have to sit back and, and think about it. Well, God is true. Let every man be alive. So if I'm looking at how I want God to bless, I want God to deliver, I want God to heal, but I'm doing everything contrary to those facts. Then it's not with God, it's with us. Amen. And so when you're looking at the, the, the having a, a desire or a, a lust, so to speak, for anything other than God, we need to take a step back and just, just think about things. Think about things. Because of the fact that this day and time is when the true believers need to stand up. Either he is God and he's able to do what he said he's done, he's, he's done, or he's not. Either he has blessed you, either he has anointed you, either he has given you everything that you need within you. The kingdom of God is within you. Either you have the ability to do everything that he has said in his word, or you do not. And so when trouble comes, when trials come, when tests come, when attacks come, that's when we need to stand. Not be wringing our hands, not be worried or concerned about what's what is or is not. And so the scripture here, it says that um, none of them, in verse 7, says none of them can by any means redeem his brother nor give to God a ransom for him for the redemption of their soul is costly. And you want to think, I want, to, want us to think about that because of the fact that um, we're to witness or to tell people about God. We're to tell the people about his son, Jesus Christ. And how he died for our sins, how he rose again from the day for our justification, how he is now seated on the right hand of the Father as our great high priest and king, how he did not leave us alone but sent the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. And so now we have everything that we need to proceed. But a lot of times people attempt to buy, if I, may, if I can use that that way. They, they want to buy or lead people astray in thinking that there are so many different ways to God. And it's not so. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So it's not a matter of trying to get to, to God um, through your money or your wealth. It's not a matter of trying to get to God to saying that, you know, I have houses and I have land and I have cars and I have this, that. It's not about that. It's about knowing that salvation to be redeemed is only through the blood that was shed through Jesus Christ. And so we can't really look at it and say that, Everything that I have is enough to get me into heaven because it's not. You must confess with your mouth and believe with your heart according to God's word. And another thing that I wanted us to look at is that we have to understand that the purpose of our whole life is really to serve God. 
The conclusion is that we honor him, is that we love him, is that we look to him, we love one another. And I know that there are many of us that are struggling with these things, and even now, having to be home with our children, and having to be home uh, from our jobs, and having to be home from a lot of entertainment, the things that we're used to, things are changing. It's about to be turned upside down, to be honest with you. But our faith should not be upside down. Our faith should not be turned. We should be holding on to God's unchanging hands. And so we have to understand that the purpose of life is to enhance our spiritual man, strengthen our spiritual man. How do you do that? Through reading the word of God, through praying, through spending time with the Lord, through doing what is good to and for others. That's how you do that. And by reading the word, you're strengthening, you're strengthening the inner man. And I know once um, something was going on and, and I was praying a lot, but I heard the spirit say, read Cynthia, read. It's, it, it's the reading of God's word, that word getting it within us, that word strengthening us because the word of God is the bread of life, remember? It is food for our spirit. Amen. And then I also want us to understand that we also have to realize that with all this going on around us, I'm not going to stand here and say it's the end of the world. But I will say that events are taking place that's getting us there. Amen. And the reason I'm saying it like that is because we have to live in this world to survive, to do the things we need to do. But at the same time, we need to prepare to be going home. This world is not a home. We need to prepare because we want to have eternal life with our Father. We want to live in the houses that he's, or the mansions, amen, that he's prepared for us. And so we have to understand that without holiness, the word of God said, you won't even see him. And when you think about the word holy, it's becoming one with God and yourself. And so there's a lot that needs to be done in working in us and even in looking at the scripture, he said, here are you people, you inhabitants, uh, he says, both low and high, rich and poor together. And if you look around, even with what's going on now, it doesn't matter if you're rich or you're poor. It doesn't matter if you have a, a house or um, a car. It doesn't matter if you're uh, middle class or upper class or poor. <laughs> Amen. Everything is happening to everyone together. And it's something that's taking place. And I just want us to understand and to be encouraged because God has no respect of persons. He's going to take care of his own. He's going to take care of you. But his desire is that we use this time to begin to seek him. We use this time to begin to look to him. We use this time to begin to know that he is God. He is our very present help. And the scripture definitely encourages us to return to him. Return to the Lord. And I don't care what it is that you've done, what it is you think that you've done. There's nothing that God would not forgive you for. There's no reason that he would not accept someone who returns to him. And so I just wanted us to be encouraged uh, um, through the scriptures, even in this, to know that it doesn't take a whole lot. And there's another verse over here in, um, in verse 8. Uh, I didn't read it earlier, but. You can go back through and read the whole thing. But if you look at verse 15, it says, But God will redeem my soul from the power of the grave, for he shall receive me, Selah. Then it says, Be not thou afraid when one is made rich, when the glory of his house is increased. But when he dieth, he shall carry nothing away. His glory shall not descend after him. So we think about that. All that we're looking for, all that we're trying to go after, you're not going to be able to take it with you. And that's why the scripture says, Seek those things which are above and not beneath. It says, though while he lived, he blessed his soul, and men will praise thee. Listen, when thou doest well to thyself. When someone can look at you and see that you got a nice house and cars and, and, and refrigerator is full of food, your covers are full of food and everything, they think that you're doing well. So it says, so it says that though while he lived, he blessed his soul, himself. <laughs> Amen. And men will praise thee when thou doest well to thyself. It says, he shall go to the generation of his fathers, and they shall never see light. Then it says, man that is in honor and understandeth not is like the beast that perish. So, in other words, if you don't understand who you are, whose you are, and you have not taken time to study, 
to understand what it is to be like God. We're formed and created in his image. We're to have character. We're to be trusted, trustworthy. But for many of us, there's no trust. And we can't be, um, and, and, we, and we're not men or women of character. Amen. But what I want everyone to understand, even just, just through the words that we're talking about now, is it does not matter your status. It does not matter what you've done, what you're doing, or what you're even trying to do. If you have not included God in this as first, none of it really matters. So if you desire anything, if you're spending time, a lot of us are home now. If you're spending all this time just watching television, watching all these shows, filling your mind up with all the drama and the things that's going on on that, or filling yourself up with the fear of the news and what they're talking about concerning this pandemic, it's not gonna, it's not, it's not gonna keep you. It's not gonna strengthen you. It's not gonna encourage you. It's only gonna bring you down. Amen. So just take this time to get aside, just steal away just a little bit if you can, and just read God's word. Read the scriptures. Pray to him, talk to him. Begin to find a way to reestablish your relationship with him. Because Jesus said in the word, he said, When I come back to the earth, shall I find any faith? Will there be anyone that still believes that I am God? And if you look at it from Genesis to where we are right now, his word is the same. It's not changed. He's a God that is holy. He desires that we be holy. We are the ones that have chosen to be rebellious. We are the ones that have chosen to live our own lifestyles. We are the ones that choose, as the song says, do it my way. Amen. But God is not changed. And so throughout society, throughout the years of history, it's been perverted. There's all kind of attacks have been against this word, but this word is the same. God is the same. He does not change. And the scripture says he is a very present help in the time of trouble. And so I just want to encourage everyone and this, um, to look at this. The, the title um, under the book of Psalms says the Psalms for the Sons of Korah. And I'm sure that they saw how uh, or recognized how the greed and the um, the lust and the covetous, covetousness brought destruction to their father and over 200,000 some other souls with him um, when God passed his judgment. But at the same time, we are living in a time where he's merciful. He said his mercy endures forever. And I just want to encourage everyone, look to the Lord for what's coming to all of your help. These are trying times, yes they are, but he is still a healer. He is still a deliverer. He is still a soon coming king. He is still a provider. He is still giving us his peace. God has still established his love within us and he loves us. And he said in his word that nothing shall separate us from that love. So let God be true, every man be a lie. Whose report will you believe? This word? Of what the world is saying. This word of what the doctors are saying. This word of what fear is saying. And even in that, he's not giving you the spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. And so I just want everyone to just take time, take a deep breath. <sighs> you don't have to be stressed. He give it, he's given us peace. You can relax in his arms. He said in his word, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for my burden is easy. My, you know what? I want to I wanna say it right. I truly want to say it right. I'm sorry, the 11th chapter, and it's that 28th verse. He says, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And ye shall find rest unto your souls. He says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I might not have been too far off, but I'd like to be accurate. Anyway, so what he's saying here, if you know what a yoke is on the oxen, you know, God wants us to yoke up with him. Amen. And he's going to carry us through these things. Look over your life. God has already brought us through many things. Amen. Many things. You're still here. So I just want to encourage everyone to just look and realize that no matter what your status is, no matter what your situation is, 
no matter what you've done, no matter what you're thinking about doing. Amen. His standard is still holiness. He is God and he loves you and he's there. He's waiting for you to talk to him. He's waiting for you to get into his word so he can reveal things to you. Amen. We are the church. Don't be concerned about churches as they say buildings being closed. You are the church. We are the church. And he said in his word that upon this rock, this truth, the gates of hell should not prevail. So according to God's word, we can stand and have it done all to stand and make our statement, Lord, I need you. Please help me. Forgive me. Receive me again. Revive me again. Help me, oh God, to recover everything that I've lost. I'm a liar. I'm a thief. I'm a fornicator. I'm an adulterer. I'm a homosexual. I'm a lesbian. No matter what it is, we can look to the Lord and just know that he is there. And to regain that trust, many broken relationships are out there, but to regain that trust, God can do that. Man can't, but God can. And if you want to be a man or woman of character and integrity, look to him and humble yourself and allow him to rebuild and to strengthen and to build up that which was torn down. And he will, amen. Because he loves us just like that, that, just that much. So I just want to encourage everyone to just know that he's still in control. I don't care what's going on. God is in control. And whoever it is that's in authority, they're in authority because God allowed it. But according to his word, he would deal with the wicked. Not us. We're not the judge. God said he'll deal with the wicked. So in his time, Everything will be dealt with. All we have to do is hold on to God. All we have to do is increase our faith to know that he is who we say he is and that he would do what it is that he said he would do. Amen. Let us pray. Holy Father, we come in the name of Jesus and we just thank you, Father. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you, O oh God, that you did send your son Jesus to die for us. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you have made the way for us. You said in your word that there was a mystery, O oh God. Christ in you, the hope of glory. And we know, O oh God, that because he is in us, hallelujah, that we're able to do all things through him. So we're asking you to give us that peace, to comfort us, O oh God, and to strengthen us. Even now, I pray for those who are bereaved, O oh God. There's so much going on. People are dying everywhere. But I'm asking you to comfort those who are bereaved in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we're asking you to send forth your healing virtue. We know that you're able to stay or stop this, vi this virus, oh God. We know that you can. But according to your word, Heavenly Father, you will do whatever it takes in order for us to return to you. You love us just that much. So I'm praying that people will look and realize what's going on and return to you, oh God. Because the most important thing is to know that you love us. You've already prepared a place for us. And it is in Jesus' name that we thank you for it. Amen. Again, I want to thank you for here, joining us and uh, hearing the word on today. I pray that it was a blessing to you and that you will continue to watch us. Please visit our website from Struggle to Street Outreach Ministries. Also, we just want to just encourage everyone to know that there are other messages also listed. And when you get the time, please share and subscribe. Thank you.